So I wanted to talk about what's been happening in the space, particularly not about the Bitcoin split of fork, but about the recent events of the shutdown of Alpha Bay. I think it's called Harmon Bay or Harmond. Uh, the two dark net marketplaces that are taken over by uh, law enforcement. And in particular, uh, BTCE E, which was an exchange. Um, there's a Russian gentleman that was, has been um, arrested in Greece. His name is Vitam Butin. I'm totally messing up his name. But uh, <clears throat> that occurred all last week over the weekend. The BTC domain has been seized by the US government. A lot of people are. Um, kind of up in arms about this, particularly the fact that BTC itself wasn't registered within the United States, neither was the domain or the servers. There's a significant amount of question about the jurisdiction that the U.S. law enforcement has on this issue, um, particularly the fact that there was, you know, legitimate customers that had nothing to do with uh, the criminal aspect, I guess, of BTC. Um, the Russian hacker is, or not Russian, but the Russian gentleman is being accused of being at least a launderer of the funds for the Mt. Gox heist that was about three years ago and a couple other Bitcoin exchange heists. Um, I might do my thoughts on that in particular uh, concerning those particular hacks and the whole laundering aspect. So like there's a change.org petition going on. Uh, I know some people poo-poo that thing but I think it's important because what it does is brings immediate attention, it changes the narrative, it demonstrates that there's other people, individuals involved, particularly considering the BTCE was widely utilized by non-citizens in the United States on a consistent regular basis. Um, so yeah, uh, the issue I want to talk about is when this was brought up because BTCE seemed to be associated with uh, ransomware payouts, like if, for example, uh, the, we're going to do, I'm going to do an entire episode on this on both the Musings of the Shy Podcast, but a word for the metaverse about ransomware and about that particular form of cybercrime, if you will. The hackers or whatever, the criminal enterprises that were running these, and some of them were running like actual like businesses when it came to this ransomware stuff, um, would take their Bitcoin and cash it out through that BTCE that was a facilitator of that. Which probably is what really garnered the biggest attention towards that site is this ransomware because it became so public, so widespread. Um, WannaCry uh, was huge, uh, particularly in Europe. More, I think that probably more so than any drug market association or even the Mt. Gox heist was probably what really kind of put pump the brake, or not pump the brakes, but accelerated any kind of investigations that might have been going on about that exchange in the first place. But the thing that I kept seeing in both articles and discussions on forum bo um, forums about the shutdown, besides the fact about the laundry and the jurisdiction is about how people shouldn't use Bitcoin on the dark market sites, how people shouldn't use Bitcoin to buy drugs, how pe people shouldn't be doing that. They should go either to Zcash or Monero and Dash. Um, because those coins have privacy components into it, and it's true, they do. Particularly Monero uh, has, was popular, I think, even on Alphabet, the place that got shut down. In fact, if I'm not mistaken, when it was released, there was um, not a sizable, for as a sizable portion as a Bitcoin mount, but there was some Monero that was held by the Alphabet administrators or the individuals that ran Alphabet, that they should utilize that for the drug purchases, that Bitcoin is not for something like that. and. They're just disheartening to me. Um, I think people miss the point when it comes to transaction of value, if you will, when it comes to Bitcoin. There's this thing called bankable funds. Um, I'm going to read the term from Investigapedia. So the definition of bankable funds is forms of payment that are accepted at financial institutions, retailers, and other organizations that directly accept payments from customers typically request that any payments be made in forms that can be redeemed and accepted by a bank. So breaking it down, they're breaking it down here, breaking about, for, for example, cash and cashier's checks are forms of bankable funds. Checks, uh, debit and credit cards are bankable funds. Uh, they are readily accepted and deposited at all major banks. On the other hand, other forms of assets such as precious metals and stocks 
although they may have considerable value, will generally not be accepted as a form of payment. You could go with a, a Coca-Cola share and, well, wow, Coca-Cola share, Coca -Cola share probably is probably worth millions. Just, you know, original, just one share, not derivatives or fractures, but like a single share. Um, you can go in there and like, you know, hand over that share and, and I don't know, buy a house or buy a, buy a Coke with it. That's, that's not something he's done. Uh, you can take some gold coins, if you will, or like those dollar eagle coins, if you will, and, and plop it down and purchase an item. Now, on a one-on-one peer-to-peer basis, you may have an arrangement with somebody in exchange for gold, silver, or what, whatever. On a one-on-one -on -one level, yeah, that does happen. But on an everyday transactional level, <laughs> it's not going to occur. And when people say that, you know, you should use big, you shouldn't use Bitcoin for drug purchases or uh, buying guns or something illicit or something like that. You're diminishing the bankable power of Bitcoin. Bitcoin should be utilized to pay for whatever that individual wants to pay for Bitcoin with Bitcoin for whatever type of item. The, the type of item should be irrelevant. What it should be relevant is that Bitcoin is accepted. That is the relevant aspect, aspect of it. And when we concede this point, when it comes to drugs, considering that in most places there's a significant movement to decriminalize all forms of uh, illicit drugs, uh, it's, it's actually very serious. I know this has been a discussion to talk about for decades, but the war on drugs is significantly diminishing. Um, at least here in the States, you're finding more and more states are either decriminalizing it or reducing the sentences where you can have like up to a gram or a certain amount or they can you can do it for medicinal purposes or outright within their states legalizing it. I think here in the states it's like California, Nevada, Colorado, Oregon, and Washington. I think it's five states that have it outright legal and then maybe about 22 states have for medicinal purposes and there's a, a wave of different states that have already either decriminalized it or just made it a tickable fine for marijuana usage. And there is a movement I want to say either Oregon or Washington, where they're actually introducing decriminalizing all drugs. Now, I don't know. I don't think it's going to get that far on the state level, but you have Portugal, you have other countries that are, oh, what was it? I think Uruguay legalized it nationally, where you can grow marijuana, and it's becoming a booming business down there. Um, it's it's going to happen. I think within the next three years, by the end of this decade, you will find another nation besides Portugal. A major nation where you will see a decriminalization effort of many illicit drugs within a major country whether it be like Canada Australia England is, is or America itself like a state you're gonna see that and th that trend is happening so but for now that's not the case and for us to concede as a community is acceptable for the United States government or any government to dictate what I can pay for my goods and services and that's acceptable to concede that point that bankable form then that's going to be a slippery road you know a little slippery little road that we're going to go down to where they're going to start pushing and dictating what is acceptable or what is bankable for Bitcoin like you can't you know maybe you can't um, buy a house with Bitcoin you can't buy a car you can't pay buy tangible property with Bitcoin you can buy all of these narrow parameters with Bitcoin as a payment form. And I think as a community, we need to not only address the, the increasing crackdown that is occurring throughout the globe when it comes to cryptocurrency, and not into our favor, but most importantly, we need to really hard press address the bankable nature of Bitcoin. That Bitcoin should be utilized for any type of payment form, period, just like cash of any nation um, it should be a bankable fund it sh you should be able to utilize it it should be accepted and granted yes it was these are listed transactions and listed peer-to-peer -peer transactions that were going on through this forum like Alpha Bay and the BTCE the whole money laundering thing and the the other drug marketplace that started with an H but we need to really strongly argue for that because I think there's a few things that we have allowed to happen, particularly when it comes to regulations, particularly in the states. It's very, it's very harsh and aggressive to a point where there's literally only three exchanges that you can technically legally purchase cryptocurrencies from. 
Um, granted, local Bitcoin still exists there. There's you know the decentralized exchanges like Bisquit, uh, but people were getting picked up and getting uh, sentenced five to seven years for running an unauthorized money transmitting. You know, not having that money transmitting license. Um, the fact that it's so hard to get exchange coin. Uh, the fact that you know when it comes when it comes to taxes, you know the overreach that occurred with Coinbase. Um, if you spent twenty thousand or more, I guess you have to worry about everyone else, not so much. Um, I don't know what the solution is. I know a lot of people don't want to associate themselves with the government. They don't even want to participate in the, any kind of regulatory process or speak to legislators or anything like that. They're basically, you know, government, you stay over here, I stay over here. As long as we stay away out of each other's way, everything is good. But I think that period of time unfortunately has ended. Wish it lasted longer, I wish we had a more time with it. Like the earlier days of the internet, it was a much longer period of time, but it's here. And we just we just have to like I guess you can say put our big point pa big boy pants on and, and address that issue. But culturally speaking, I think we really need to have the discussion about bankable funds and fungibility. Um, which is an issue within the community as well because if you utilize a Bitcoin on certain uh, either exchanges or certain platforms is they're considered tainted coins because you bought something illicit and so you, your coin is tagged and therefore your account could be tagged and then you can't either obtain your funds or get a refund or, or you can't use that exchange any longer to purchase more Bitcoin if you obtain the Bitcoin through some innocuous transaction maybe you sold a computer or something like that through purse.io or through um, open bazaar and the bitcoin that you received well maybe three purchases before was used on a, a dark market website and because of block spies are able to trace all the public transactions because unfortunately privacy wasn't built in or baked in into bitcoin from the conception I think it was something that was considered to be added on because it's a very difficult thing to do. But because right now um, the nature of Bitcoin, because of that, um, you know, is a hindrance, if you will. And so you get these computers, and then you deposit it on your Coinbase because you want to flip that coin or you know get actual fiat coming out. And then you find out you can't do it because three people go use it on a dark net marketplace, and that's that's an issue. Um, but this is kind of sticking to the issue of this particular episode bankable funds we need to have that conversation we need to push back and say yes granted you can be traced if block spies blah 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 there's no privacy in Bitcoin really um, you should be able to purchase drugs with it you should be able to buy guns you should be able to do you know, criminal activities if you will you should we should have that bankability just like cash I mean you, we've all seen those news reports or Movies based off true events where they have, you know, the DEA has reams, loads, pallets of cash. You know, Fast Five, they <laughs> stole like, what, a hundred million dollars off of these pallets or whatever and the big old safe. We should have that same, you know, power that cash has. That's the whole point of, it, of Bitcoin is to have the same economic powers and abilities that our current economic system provides without the centralization, um, without the corruption, without the guitar, the, the bank, bank cartels and the government oversight and government interference and manipulation and just the overall corruptive uh, crony capitalism really of our current economic systems. So that's just my thought. You know, I, I think just from reading the news story and reading about, and I, I will address it on the next episode, my thoughts on the BTCE shut down the exchange in this arrest and the overreach I think on the part of the US government in this and I think it might be a blowback there might be a pushback on it but overall I think we need to have this discussion of bankability of Bitcoin and how it is important it's part of the utility it's part of the function of Bitcoin we, we need bankability and if we don't have that then what's the point of all this honestly um, you can have a storage value all you want, but if you have a very small window, this very tiny narrowness of what you can utilize it for, then why is everyone investing all their money into it? So that's it for now. Thank you for listening. 
into the moon.